On episode 258 of the Jeep Talk Show, we'll find out that we may have to wait a little longer than expected for the new Grand Wagoneer. Winter is here, so we'll talk a little bit about driving in the snow. We've got a full show for you tonight. We'll be playing your voicemails and sharing your reviews. And we'll even say hello to an old friend. We've got a special tech talk for our TJ Rubicon owners. We've got a mod for you guys to finally take control over those lockers. And tammy has got a review of a product that we all never knew that we really needed. It's all coming up on this week's Jeep Talk Show. This episode of the Jeep Talk Show is sponsored in part by... Crawl Bright Performance Off-Road Lighting. Are your aux lights not showing you the road or the trail at night? Get some of the brightest and best made lights on the market today at crawlbright.com and start seeing what you're missing. That's crawlbright.com. Also brought to you by Little Passenger Seats. Have you ever wished you could add additional seating to your Jeep's cargo space? With Little Passenger Seat, along with their do-it-yourself install kit, you can easily increase your Jeep seating capacity. Want to learn how? Visit littlepassengerseats.com for more information. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show. With Tammy on Wrangler. Tony and Josh on Cherokee. So sit back, strap in, and brace yourself. First week in G. Well, the fate of the Grand Wagoneer has been decided for now. The development of the Grand Wagoneer, the $100,000 plus premium three row SUV the FCA brand intends to slot against other top end SUVs has allegedly been placed on hold. Fiat Chrysler won't comment. Other automo- automotive media outlets reported last month that the vehicle has been scuttled. But that's not the case. It has simply been placed on hold. Your call is very important to us. Please continue to hold. Thank you for holding. Somebody will be with you eventually. Now, I have two or three theories of what's actually happening, what's going on, and they involve cash and the commander. Let's start with the easy one to deal with first, cash. FCA doesn't have any to spare. The company, which is now six years into recovery, remains the only major automaker in the world with more debt than cash. Auto manufacturing, despite advances in robotics and automation, remains an expensive undertaking. Who'd have thunk, right? Even more so when a company actually has to develop new products. Right now, in addition to an all-consuming push to bring Alfa Romeo back from the dead, FCA's U.S. engineering teams are working to finish a redesigned Ram 1500 pickup a retooled Jeep Wrangler, and a Wrangler-based pickup. That right there is all brand new right by itself. Then there is the factory shuffle going on right now to allow the company to increase its production amounts of pickups and SUVs. Assembly plants in Sterling Heights, Michigan and Toledo, Ohio must be retooled to switch from a unibody construction to body-on-frame products. That plan simply doesn't happen for free. U.S. sales of the Grand Wagoneer were first scheduled to be launched in 2018, then were pushed back to 2019, so why now slap a hold on development of what promises to be a profit-rich luxury SUV in what is now an SUV-crazed market? My guess from reading the all-knowing Magic 8-Ball is that Jeep's talented team of designers, given the constraints of the program, especially limits on the size of vehicles that can be produced at the company's Jefferson North Assembly Plant in Detroit, came up with the wrong product aimed at the wrong competitor. Remember the Jeep Commander? Well, both FCA and Jeep would rather you forget. Since the idea of resurrecting the Grand Wagoneer namesplate arose back in 2014, FCA executives have stuck to the claims that the brand's luxury SUV would share a unibody platform with a redesigned Grand Cherokee. That means adding a third row to a stretched two-row platform, then trying to cram as much luxury as possible in the attempts to compete with the likes of Land Rover, all while keeping it off-road capable enough to wear a Jeep badge. Oh, and don't forget it has to come with a price tag that's somewhere above a Yugo and below a Murcielago. That was the intended fate for the Jeep Commander, which we all know failed miserably mainly because its third row seating, something that was a large part of its marketing, was virtually unusable if you had legs. The Commander was Land Rover sized, and the current Grand Cherokee and Dodge Durango are their current sizes because, well, that is simply that will, all, will, all that will fit at the Jefferson North Assembly Plant, without expensive retooling, that is. Remember, Jeep uh, brand Mike Manley this year estimated a top-end price for the Grand Wagoneer of around $140,000, a price point that will limit volumes even in Jeep's largest markets and make spreading the cost of development around that much harder. When you add the cost of retooling FCA's Warren Truck Assembly Plant in Michigan from body-on-frame to unibody to build the Grand Wagoneer or 
retooling Jefferson North to be able to build a larger SUV, well, the business case for the unibody Grand Wagoneer becomes very dicey indeed. Well, but there is another less expensive way. Imagine, if you will, instead of a Jeep Wagoneer aimed not at Land Rover, Mercedes, or Bentley, but at the Chevy Suburban and GMC Yukon. Built on body on frame and co-developed with the next generation Ram 1500, the Grand Wagoneer could retain all of its off-road capabilities. The Ram already borrows quite a bit from the Jeep off-road parts bin, so the platform is basically there already. So figuring out how to add an ample third row seating and storage wouldn't really be an issue in the slightest. Such a Grand Wagoneer would also require far less money to retool the Warren truck plant and would promise greater volumes, a potential lower price point, and a large audience of General Motors loyal but Jeep curious customers for dealers to plunder. If I've learned anything over the years of covering Jeep news, it's that FCA has two choices. If they have two choices, they will undoubtedly go with the cheaper of the two. Regardless of what the market or fans want, apparently. It will be interesting to see what's going to happen with the Grand Wagoneer over the next couple few years. And of course, you guys will be posted as soon as developments happen. I want to thank all of you out there who keep helping us out each and every week by submitting stories for This Week in Jeep. If you have a response to any one of our stories or something you think we should be reporting on, by all means, send us an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com. You know, the Commander was a, a very uh, sexy, interesting vehicle to me. And I was really sorry to see, I was happy that I didn't buy one because I was actually thinking of that as a, a natural upgrade from the Cherokee to, you know, keeping something in the same type of body style, but a little bigger, more pasture seating. And if you remember, they had all the, the model with all those uh, overhead windows. I mean, everybody yeah. would have their own little window to look through little sunroof on those little panoramic sunroof they had going on there yeah but it was like every each individual would have one i mean uh, the person in the middle does that. person in the middle kind of got this didn't they could use one of the two but it was like individual <laughs> little sunroofs for everybody it was just a cool idea uh and i probably would not have bought a new one but uh it uh so i probably wouldn't have found one with that feature but anyway I was just so, so so sorry to hear that it wasn't designed very well. The Apparently, the V8 uh, didn't have enough power, but it sucked a lot of fuel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was one of the biggest complaints with those is that they just guzzled gas and were gutless to the day as the day is long. And and there was some, some, a number of other issues. There were some transmission issues that they were you know notorious for and, of course, some electrical issues as well uh, because they did cram a ton of of electronics into into the commanders right. and uh it didn't all work out the way that it was supposed to yeah and uh it just seems a shame that uh jeep has stopped making jeeps i mean they still make the wrangler <laughs> of course but they don't make the the rugged off-road vehicle yeah. that was uh had sparse electronics and uh you know, just the things that you really don't need to make you get from point A to point B. Sure. That was the nice thing about the Jeep, that you could rely on it to get you from point A to point B. And, uh, you know, you may have to bring a pocket radio with you, but... <laughs> yeah. And and hold your own drink if <laughs> if you were dealing with the, the early XJs. So, uh, I don't know. It's it's their market. I mean, they, they know their market, and they're trying to do the best they can. It just seems a shame to go from something that was so well-built and go 300,000 miles routinely to something that uh, is really reminiscent of the uh, the seventies or the eighties uh, type of uh, car manufacturing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, you know, times change, and you know, so do vehicles. But it seems like we're going a, a cyclical cyclical thing where we're going back the way it was, and and uh, you just wouldn't think that it would be that way in the twenty uh, first century. Hey guys, we need you to tell a friend. We're always looking to improve and expand the show, and there's no better way than expensive advertising. <laughs> Fortunately, we don't have seventy grand to advertise with Adam Carolla's network oh, or Spike gee. TV. <laughs> but we do have you guys. We're doomed! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you guys can help us grow not only the show, but also the 4x4 radio network. Please consider telling someone you know about the show, or better yet, pop on your social media account and spread the word. I'm Clyde, and this is Tommy. From the Run House! You're listening to the Jeep Talk Show. Cheers! You're listening to Jeep Talk Show, the number one Jeep podcast. At my mom's house. 
All righty. Well, let's see. Let's talk about the 4 by 4 radio network. You're listening to a 4 by 4 4 by 4 radio network podcast. Yes, you are indeed. And the Jeep Talk Show is a proud member of that 4 by 4 radio network. We know that Jeeps may not be for everybody. We also know that those people need help. Just about everyone <laughs> loves the outdoors and getting out into nature. And the 4 by 4 radio network, well, has a little something for everyone. Just visit 4x4radionetwork.com and learn more about the 4 by 4 podcast, Center Steer podcast, and the Trail Chasers podcast. Shut up and listen. So shut up. You don't shut up. Shut up, Shane. Hey. (laughs) Shut up and listen. It's time for Wrangler Talk. It's time for G Mama. Hey, folks. You know, I always remember growing up how really successful television shows would have spinoff shows. Um, I could go on and name a whole bunch of them, but I just want to mention a spinoff of a current show. It's actually a podcast. It's the spinoff of our own Jeep Talk Show podcast. On Tuesday nights, Tony and myself host the Jeep Talk Call-In Show. And you never know, Josh pops his head every once in a while. Now, this show is about where we ask you, the listener, to call in and share your experiences with us. We start the show off with a question, and we ask you, the listener, to call in live and share your answer with us. Now, our conversations seem to morph into some interesting Jeep topics. It's fun how I see that happening on the um, Jeep Talk Colin show. Now, Tuesday night, this past Tuesday night, the Jeep Talk Colin show, our topic went from what's on your Jeep wish list to driving in the snow. So I thought tonight I would talk about wheeling in the snow. And what I'm really hoping for is that you guys listening out there will call in to our voicemail line and share your snow wheeling tips with us. You can call anytime, and the number is 530-675-4102, or you can use our voicemail button on our website on the right-hand side of the screen. Now, I grew up driving in the snow in North Dakota. And winter driving offers its own set of challenges. But driving on the icy snow-filled streets is so much different than wheeling out in the snow. Um, I've only wheeled in the snow on the trails off-roading once. And so I still have a a lot of stuff to, to learn about that. That's why I'm asking you to call in and share your tips with me and us on the Jeep Talk Show. Now, the few things that I know that I've learned just from that one time or from reading is make sure you have your needed recovery gear, everything that you would normally have, plus one additional item that will come in real handy is a snow shovel. And this comes in handy when you're out just driving on the streets too because it can help you dig out the snow around your tires, your axle, and your frame when you're pushing the snow and not getting anywhere. You also want to dress appropriately, duh, And always be prepared. Now, one of the most important techniques in snow wheeling is to be able to read the snow. And I feel I'm pretty good at this because I grew up in snow. Um, This takes lots of practice because there are so many different types of snow. You have the soft, wet snow in the sun is quite different than the hard, cold snow that you find in the shadows or on the north-facing slopes if you're in the mountains. And understanding and anticipating these different consistencies is important. Wet, heavy snow is often easier to get on top of, while dry snow is a little bit more difficult. And if you decide to go back where you've already wheeled through the same tracks, it could be a totally different experience because you've changed the consistency of the snow. One thing I realized growing up quickly, or growing up, something I realized quickly was don't spin your tires. When you feel that resistance in the snow, your natural reaction is just to propel forward. And this often results in you digging holes into the snow and making it worse. And then when your tires spin so much, it creates like a little friction and it melts the top layer of the snow and it can refreeze and turns into ice and it makes it a lot more difficult. Instead, you should just ease off the throttle Maybe back up slightly and try to continue forward. Sometimes you might want to pick a different line by going right or left um, to get out of the problem spot. 
Another thing you want to make certain is don't let that snow compact in your radiator because that prevents airflow and could cause um, some issues in your engine. And Tuesday night on the Jeep Talk Show, we talked about the tires in the snow. And I'm really excited to try out my new Goodyear Duratrax. The word I'm getting is they are awesome in the snow. And so I was reading more about good snow tires, and I read that wide, flexible tires are really good when you're wheeling in their snow because they provide a larger footprint. Now, I'm just not sure if that's going to work in all types of snow, but my guess is yes, but I don't know for sure, and that's why I'm asking you guys to call in and share your experiences. Like I said, I've only wheeled once in the snow, and that was at Roush Creek. It was really, really cold, and the snow was really hard and icy. And I normally air down when I go off-roading, and I did that when I went wheeling in the snow. However, I was on my stock Ruby tires, so I'm just not sure how these other tires will do. So everyone says they'll do good, so we'll see. Um, as I was reading about tires, I read that mild tread patterns allow the tire to propel your vehicle across the snow without digging. And I just wasn't sure what mild tread patterns would look like. So I'm hoping Tony and Josh here in a minute can explain that to me. Um, and then there's, we also talked about um, blockers, locking your differentials. We talked about that Tuesday. And it's doing that as a benefit in any train, but more so in the snow. There are benefits to wheeling without them engaged and vice versa. When you get into deep snow, the lockers can be engaged and keep both your wheels turning at the same speed. And this is going to aid in keeping your tires from spinning and it will, should help you propel yourself. In my Rubicon, I can push my axle lock button to engage my front and rear lockers. This will only work when I'm in four low and going 10 miles per hour or less. Now, generally, you don't want to be using your lockers when you're going to be neat needing to make lots of turns because both wheels are going to be spinning at the same speed. And like I said, I would love to get more snow wheeling tips from everyone and suggestions. And please don't be shy. Call our voicemail. Go to our website. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can just click the, the little button and leave us a voicemail. Anything else you'd like to add, we'd love to hear from you. And you can go over to our mobile-friendly website, um, the Jeep talk form.com and post an email or make, or you can post a thread or you can email me at info at Jeep and use the subject line Wrangler talk. We just want to hear from you. Damn it. Just please no, let please. us know you're alive. <laughs> well, uh, you know, Tammy, you have, uh, actually, uh, I guess Josh as well. I mean, if, if not there on the, uh, around the house, he can at least drive up in the mountains and, and deal with snow. I uh, probably will not have any snow wheeling experience unless I drive hundreds or a thousand miles to, <laughs> to get to it. Uh, I, I envy you. Uh, I, I know lots of you guys out there in the snow regions are going, oh, you're so lucky. Uh, but uh, it, it's got to be interesting. It's got to be a lot of fun to go out there and, and crush through the snow and just deal with all those things and uh, the sliding around. Uh, it sounds a lot like going into the mud, but it, it, but different from a, right. you know, a it's not going to be exactly the same, but it's fun having that kind of out of control feeling uh, the, the sideways stuff that you don't normally feel when you're in a vehicle. Right. Love the drifts. Yeah. Love the drifts. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember my first time um, it's, I had my Jeep when it snowed in the neighborhood and the, the streets were just covered and I was the only one in my neighborhood. And I told my husband, I'm going to go out for just to check it out. And I was out driving around my neighborhood for two hours. <laughs> just in the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Because it was all fresh snow. Nobody uh, it's, had, it's just beautiful to me. I mean, yeah. I've, I've at least uh, got to see that once. Uh, oh, actually, twice in my life. And it just it changes the whole environment the way it looks. Uh, it's just beautiful. I used to, uh, we do get a more uh, we have ice storms more uh, more often than we have snow. So uh, ice storms are beautiful as well, but a lot more devastating than snow. Right, it breaks. Well, a lot you of want things. to talk about sliding around? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, so Tammy, I don't know. Uh, you, I think you're going to bring this up in a in a future um, a segment of uh, Wrangler Talk. But we did find out on the the Jeep Talk call in show that uh, Steve was talking about. 
where you can't engage those lockers. And I was not aware of We're that. We're going know? to get into that a little bit later in the okay, show, guys. Good. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, just completely crap on your guys' point or discussion here. But oh, I no, got a little no, something. I got a little no. something for you here later in the show. No, I didn't know. I didn't know it was being covered. That's good because you know when I think of lockers, I think of what well, you put them in after you have the Jeep. And when you want them, you press the button and they come on. I had no idea that you couldn't uh, engage those things anywhere you, anytime and any speed you wanted to in yeah. the, the Rubicon. So uh, yeah, I found that very all interesting. Safety features. Yep. Well, but I think there's ways features. around it, but well, it's a Jeep. Damn it. We don't need safety. <laughs> <laughs> safety fourth. <laughs> oh yeah. But anyway, uh, snow's looking good. Actually, I asked Tammy when she connected tonight, she got snow. I know she didn't, but I just wanted her to say yes. Oh. No, well, it's yet. only a matter of time. <laughs> Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? What are you talking about, man? Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? I got no idea what the heck. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Get out of my face, yo. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Underwater. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? In the bubble bath. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? No clue. And where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? While flexing on stumps. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? I would assume on the radio. The Jeep Talk Show, available on iTunes and at jeeptalkshow.com. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? We want to know and we want to hear from you. Uh, just call 530-675-4102. Any time of the day or night, and let us know where you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at. Now, here's the the favorite part for many of us. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but uh, reviews. Now, I just want to mention real quick. Um, I'm not complaining. Okay, I'm complaining. We haven't mm-hmm. had an iTunes review since October the 14th. You know, wow. that was 2016, and we're almost com- done with 2016. 2017 is knocking at the door. And uh, we need your iTunes reviews. You know, actually, I think we have 79. <laughs> we have 79. I'm just thinking of that nine times thing. Um, we have 79 reviews, and all, need, all we need is one more to get to 80. But when we get to 80, it's going to be, we only need 20 more to get to 100. So I'm just going to warn right. you guys ahead of time. It's, it's only, it's only, <laughs> it's only. <laughs> oh, but we do have some reviews tonight, don't we? Yeah, we do have, uh, we got a Facebook review here. We had Bill, who gave us a five-star review. He says, he's been listening to the show for a while now. One thing that bothers me is the audio delay causing people to talk over each other. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, I told, yeah it's frustrating. I told Bill I agreed with him, and uh, that's a kind of a Skype issue. I think we've talked about it here before, where Skype kind of mutes the audio from uh, uh, for, on the receiver side. So if Josh is talking, it's hard for him to hear uh, the show or Tammy or, or anybody. So, uh, it's kind of, a you know, it's amazing that, uh, us monkeys got this thing working as it is. Yeah, so, but exactly. we know exactly what you're talking about. It's like the, the, uh, the news shows when they're talking on satellite and <laughs> there's that long delay, a long delay. Yeah. yeah. So. I think it's more prevalent on the Jeep talk Colin show. Well, we do a lot more talking to, to yeah. people. So it probably is. And we had another one uh, that, uh, and, and we were perfectly fine with this. There was no text with it. Uh, Philbert Mendoza gave us a five-star review also on Facebook and uh, with no text to it. But uh, we certainly appreciate that five-star review. And if you, haven't, if you haven't guessed, that means you can go to our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash Jeep Talk Show. And there is a place there where you can do reviews. And we're perfectly fine with that. Uh, I, I was surprised when I saw one there. I went, Hey, you can do reviews on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, you can even leave us a comment over on YouTube. We'll get it there. And of course, any constructive criticism or any comments you guys leave, we always read right here on the show. Yeah, we do. And actually, to, uh, to the surprise of some negative uh, reviews, uh, the people that yeah. have left the negative reviews. Yeah, we have had a couple out there. People have taken us to task over this or that or whatnot. It happens, guys. You know, yeah. we can't. Yeah, please everybody all the time. And we appreciate that. I think we have a lot more tech in the show because uh, we had a couple yeah. of people complaining that we uh, had too much fluff. So uh, That's right. We got rid of the fluffer and uh, went to more tech. It's hard to follow that. really. <laughs> but I got something to tell all of you guys, all of my Jeep lovers out there. Who doesn't love a good night ride on the trails in their Jeep? And especially in the snow and all this winter's mm. time. Oh, it's great. But you guys know that the factory lights are made for mall crawling, not rock crawling. Mm. How can you get the most out of your Jeep if your lights are worthless? Let me tell you about a brand that makes great quality light bars for our Jeeps. Without the high prices that many brands expect. It's the guys over at Crawlbright Performance Off-Road Lighting. They have the highest quality lights made from the top components in the industry. They use the best name brand LEDs like Cree and Osram. 
Aircraft-grade aluminum and virtually unbreakable polycarbonate lenses go into each and every one of their lights. These lights are 100% waterproof and backed by a three-year replacement guarantee. They make LED light bars, pods, brackets, and wiring. They even have rock lights to illuminate the ground you are crawling on. Crawlbright prides themselves on ordering the best quality, offering the best quality lights, but at a price that most Jeepers can actually afford. Fans of the Jeep Talk Show can enter Jeep Talk Show, all one word, for a special, check this out, 20% discount wow. on everything on their website, guys. So head over to crawlbright.com, and remember, brighter is better. Did you say 20%, Josh? 20%. Just in time for Christmas, guys. If you got a Jeeper in your life that needs a light bar on their Jeep, 20% discount over at Crawlbright. All and you got to do is use the, use the code Jeep Talk Show. And you know, it now is the perfect time to order that stuff if you want to get it there in time for, for Christmas. Even good, if it's for yourself, because you know, yeah, you're going to be out there working, you're going to be out there working on the Jeep on Christmas day, aren't you? So you must well be putting on lights. <laughs> Did you know you can add one, two, or even three more passenger seats to your Jeep's cargo space? Little passenger seats, custom builds, and upholsters passenger seating to match your vehicle upholstery and ships the seat to your front door with your vehicle specific mounting system. The easy to do it yourself kit safely and easily increases your seating capacity in as little as two hours. Each little passenger seat is made to your specifications to meet the specific transportation needs of your growing family. Every seat includes seat belts mounted to the seat and designed to be easily removed if you need to use your cargo space. Little passenger seats offer seating for over 50 different popular SUV models, including most Grand Cherokees, 1984 to 2001 Cherokee, Wrangler Unlimiteds, and the good old Wagoneers, and even the Liberties. Whether you are in the market for a new car or you're trying to keep the vehicle you love, little passenger seats gives your family more options. So don't get rid of your Jeep quite yet just to get a minivan for more seating. Please call us at 1-800-252-9989 or visit the website littlepassengerseats.com to find out more. You know, um, whenever we, uh, many years ago, because all the kids are now adults, but uh, when all the kids were living here, we had five kids in the house. So with Susie and I, that meant seven people in the vehicle at the same time. So there was no way we were taking the Cherokee because that's five people. And I would have loved to have had this option uh, to, we could have put the girls in the back and in, the, in this, uh, the little seat and we Jump would have been, seat, yeah. yeah, we would have been uh, great uh, as far as the safety goes. Cause it meets all the safety requirements. Uh, and, uh, but you know what we did? We bought a minivan. So we had a 95 Ford Aerostar and that's get and, and yeah, I know. <laughs> and you can, my wife absolutely hated the thing it got everybody around it was a great vehicle hey, for that served its purpose right yeah but yeah. it's not the cool vehicle well she's in the the 03 tj now oh, but yeah you're making it up for it now <laughs> <laughs> but this like i'm saying like i mean i, I think dan was actually even looking at uh, from the four by four podcast was actually thinking about getting something that was a little bigger than the uh, his xj because he's got a growing family yeah. and uh, this this actually might be a great alternative for him so if you guys haven't been over there, go, go check it out. I haven't been to the site in a couple of weeks, but the last time I was on there, they had a nice uh, video there on the, uh, the homepage of uh, Jay Leno's garage talking about these uh, seats because they use them in uh, their vehicles there. Boy, now if we can just get Jay Leno to talk about our show. I'm working on it, man. I, uh, done, <laughs> I've done a tweet and apologize for all those negative things I said about Tim taking away. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all those late a, show comments a, yeah, i'm sorry jay <laughs> take it away from uh, david letterman's uh take it david letterman's job <laughs> you got tech questions oh, what do i ever we have answers oh that's good I can, I, it's tech talk with jeep talk so we were talking well you guys were talking a little bit earlier in the show about that locker switch and how it really only works on the Rubicons when you're going 10 miles per hour or less. Well, I got a fix for you and this one's for the TJ. Sorry Tammy, I'll look into a JK fix for you here. It might be the same sort of process, but uh don't quote me on that. I don't want to give you guys false information and it uh, end up hurting your Jeep or something. So the Wrangler Rubicon, named for the famed Rubicon Trail in the Sierra Nevada mountains, was introduced in the summer of 2002. It was manufactured for the TJ and LJ through July of 2006. It featured front and rear air actuated locking Dana 44 axles with the Rock Track NV241 4 to 1 transfer, 4 to 1 ratio transfer case, diamond plate rocker panels, 
16-inch alloy wheels and Goodyear MTR T245 75 16 tires. If you are a Jeep Rubicon owner, you most likely have discovered that your lockers only can be engaged when the transfer case is in low range and you are moving at 10 miles per hour or less. Not exactly what I would consider user-friendly. Now, I have no doubt that Jeep engineers did this for a good reason. Hopefully, safety was their first reason. But nonetheless, having the lockers available in high range would be nice, and some might argue in some situations even required. Ever wheel on the sand dunes? Now, see where I'm going here. Okay, now since I can't be there to do this for you, you're going to have to, well, take some notes. All right, let's get started. The tools you're going to need for this are pretty basic and readily available if you don't already have them. Screwdrivers, real easy. Grab a few. A number two Phillips and a small head, a small head, a small flathead will do just fine. Wire, a little bit of wire here. We're not talking a whole lot. And some wire end connectors like T-taps, uh, clamp taps, even butt connectors will do fine. Uh, if you're here, and if you don't have any of that or a crimping tool, um, a soldering gun and some solder and some electrical tape will get you there as well. Now, this is something that's a little bit optional as well. It's called a skew driver, S-K-E-W. If you don't own one, get one. If you don't know what one is, look it up. You don't absolutely need it for this, but it may make things a little bit easier. And trust me, it will be a very welcome addition to any toolbox. It's basically a right angle screwdriver attachment for your drill or driver and allows you to load anything with a standard quarter inch hex on it. Absolutely genius. Now, the cover for the center, the cover for the center dash section must be removed first and foremost. Pry up the defroster grill to expose the two screws that hold the dash cover in place. Do you guys have any version of an aftermarket roll cage or additions to the factory one, like a crossbar, for instance? This may make access to these screws a little difficult. So do what you have to do. With the two screws removed at the top of the dash, the cover can be removed from the center dash section. Just grab it and pull. There are two clips in the bottom corners, but they're just friction fit into a couple of holes. Be careful. These can be a little bit brittle if uh, your Jeep's been seeing a lot of sun or it's kind of old. So use this as a grabbing point. Lift straight up and out and just pull it right towards you. It should come free with not too much effort. The lower panel that contains the locker switch must now be removed from the dash. There are four screws securing the panel to the dash. All you got to do is remove the four screws. You can fill it using a Phillips head screwdriver. Gently slide the panel out of the dash, and we can start beginning to get to work on this thing. There's a white plug towards the passenger side of the panel. This is the one that will be modified. I found it easier to work on it when, I w when it was removed from the panel. It's, otherwise, you just, you're kind of running into things, and you got things that are fighting you. And trust me, just unplug it, pull it out. There's a little clip on the plug. Depress it, and you can pull the plug straight out of the panel. While there are a little, couple different jumper combinations that one can use for this mod, well, this is the one I'm going to talk about first and foremost will give you the ability to turn the lockers on at any time you want, regardless of speed. From this point forward, you will need to reference the wiring schematic for that plug specifically. Images of, of this are readily available all over the internet because this is a popular mod. You can also find it on the write-up associated with this tech talk on our forum at jeeptalkforum.com. Now, this is important, Jeepers, because the wire colors aren't the same for every trim or year, so going by those is like, well, it's going to be causing some problems. All of the mods will refer to the pins by number, and the schematic will tell you which wire is which pin, and so on and so forth. Okay, so to do this, pin number one, labeled in the diagram as ground, is jumpered to pins four and five, labeled locker enable signal one and locker enable signal two in the diagram. Some folks add an extra switch and route the ground wire through it. This would allow them to turn the bypass feature on and off as needed. To me, that's just adding unnecessary complexity and one more thing that could possibly fail. Pin 1, the ground connection, usually has a black wire connected to it. I haven't seen anything else yet, but, you know, it, just in case, pin number 1 is what we're talking about here. Pin 4 is next to pin 1 in the other row. Pin 5 is next to pin 4. See why I had you take notes and refer to the diagram? Yeah. So, using a wire tap or splice and solder in to make the connection for the bypass, using a small piece of wire or roughly the same gauge of wire that is in the harness, connect from the wire of pin 1, tap that into the wire of pin 4, then into pin 5. Essentially, we're just making a little daisy chain here. Once you have the three wires connected all together and all of your connections are insulated, well, you're done. If you removed the plug from the back of the panel, reconnect it. Put the panel back into the dash and reinstall the cover over the dash section. You're done. Basically, that's it, guys. Now, the most common problem that people will get, will run into, is the number two jumpered, or number two wire jumpered into the mix instead of the number one. The number two pin is the panel lamp's feed location. If you jumpered number two to numbers four and five, while well, you're connecting your panel lamp circuit into your locker circuit. This will not only blow fuses, but also short out your dash lights. So, don't do that. But what you can do is a couple of variations of this. If you just jumper pin number one to pin number four, the lockers can be engaged under 10 miles per hour in all transfer case positions. 
If you jumper pin four and five together only, the lockers can be engaged under 10 miles per hour only in two high and four high and can be engaged in any speed in four low. So we have pretty much be able to cover the bases here. If you want the ultimate in control, you don't use any of the OE Rubicon wiring or switches to control the lockers. How? Well, using all new stuff. Think of the wiring as a simple on-off switch to provide 12 volts to the compressors. While it wire it that way and they'll work just fine. The indicator lights in the dash won't work properly, of course. They'll blink at you while the locker's engaged, but that's a small price to pay. The compressors will turn on, on uh, turn off automatically when the correct pressure is achieved anyway, so you don't really have to worry about that part of things at all. Treat the locker's compressor as a light bulb. You want to power on and off with individual switches, and you'll be good to go. Just don't forget to put a fuse on it, okay? And hey, Jeepers, let me know if you guys have a tech question you would like answered here on the Jeep Talk Show. Go to jeeptalkforum.com or even, uh, even on your smartphone, guys, or shoot me an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com with the subject line, Tech Talk. So, Tammy, are they air lockers on your uh, Rubicon? You would probably hear the compressors kicking on if it was an air locker. No, I don't hear that. So, Josh, uh, do you know if they are uh, lockers made by AR ARB that uh, are in the, the uh, TJ yes Wranglers? Yes and no. Yes and no. If you open up a, a, a Dana 44 Rubicon front locker, it's going to look just like an RD100 from, from mm -hmm. ARB. The problem is, is that it's not serviceable. The parts don't quite come apart just like that. I think what they did is, is this, it's Chinese company that, that makes these. Oh. Um, it, it's a knockoff version of ARB. Some say it comes off the same assembly line because the parts are virtually identical. Mm -hmm. It's just not serviceable. There, it's, it's things are fused together where they come apart in the ARBs and they don't in these. And so that's why you see a lot of people swapping the lockers out in, wow. in, in these, uh, in the Rubicons, especially because then you can go into, into different options and more control and, and things like that. So mm -hmm. it, 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 to answer your question, it's both yes and no. <laughs> right so it's an AB, uh, arb style and perhaps it is an arb style locker yeah yeah and arp may or may not have been uh, involved there was probably some kickbacks to keep a lawsuit from Correct. from happening or something <laughs> now in tammy's case with the jk things are going to be a little bit different obviously we're talking about a different vehicle platform here we're talking about different electronics and whatnot now it does all work pretty much the same way here mm -hmm. so the science behind this can be adapted if you are you know an electrical guru this is something that you could very easily figure out but uh but otherwise you know doing this bypass on a jk don't take my word for it the exact procedure may not work oh yeah you know you got to look it up and uh look i would i would check several sources and make sure that you get two or three that agree before uh, you start doing any of this stuff because you don't want to you don't want to be without your lockers and you certainly don't want to blow a bunch of fuses or lamps or right now, I have vetted this information, guys, so for all of our TJ Rubicon owners out there, this information is gold for you guys, so feel free to use that. And, of course, here in the next week or so, you guys can see this right up over at uh, our Jeep, uh, jeeptalkforum.com. Now, somebody um, shared a link with me after we were talking about this Tuesday night, mm -hmm. and it, um, I could, they said I could use the super chips Oh, yeah, to change. that sounds like that'd be an expensive way of doing it, though. Right. Don't, those things are like 400 bucks, aren't they? I, I know they're pretty costly. I was just going to say. They can be. I'm, I'm sure yeah. that there are other options out there. I'm sure you've got oh, this you know, one junkyard shows options as well, but, uh, you know. For $161. Yeah, but well, I bet you it's not anything more anything different than what the TJ is, just different uh, plug and location and wires right. and so on and so Very forth. Well, could be, yeah. Uh, I would just uh, look for the, the wire. I mean, wiring stuff you've already done the the lights the wiring of your lights and this isn't that much different different from that you just have to take your time and make sure of uh, what pins you're uh, jumping and tammy this will be a subject that i will cover for our jk owners because this is something that people really look forward to um and and when they find that they can only use their lockers at 10 miles an hour or under you know it mm. kind of discourages a lot of people so you know we're gonna we'll take care of this we'll hook our jeep owners up we'll get you guys uh, all set up I'll get that information for you guys, and you can look forward to it in a future episode. may not be next week's, but in the next few weeks at least. So uh, I, uh, I was telling Steve, I, I was really shocked about this, where you can't engage the lockers, uh, you know, unless you're in four-wheel low and below 10 miles mm -hmm. an hour. I asked Steve, what if I want to drag race somebody? I want to get that. <laughs> <laughs> I want both those tires pulling on the rear. He says, well, yeah, yeah, you got me there. Drag yeah. racing would be would be what you want that for. <laughs> 
See, the joke is you don't really drag race in a Jeep unless it's a yes. unless it's a Grand Cherokee, but I don't think they come with lockers. All righty. Well, anyway, so uh, that's a very interesting subject. I had no idea, and uh, that all came about on uh, the Jeep Talk Colin show. So uh, we would have covered this subject, but before now, had I known about that because I find it very interesting. Are you tired of all that noise from those other shows? Now, Darryl, I think you ought to keep that rig at the mall. Now you can relax to the pleasing tones of the Jeep Talk Show every week. Unless you've got Dana 60s and 40. Get the highest audio quality possible with each download. Right. Now, you know, you can use them in with them, with them super swampers. And if you're tired of all that other stuff. Uh, and a thing with a tank of big old tires and a lighter. Then subscribe to the highest quality podcast on the web. The Jeep Talk Show. Available on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher Radio, and more. You guys are going to give me a beer. Mm-hmm. Hey, like I mentioned early in Wrangler Talk, we want you guys to call us and leave us voicemails because we love hearing from you. And you can do that by calling our voicemail phone line at 530-675-4102. Or you can jump over to our website, jeeptalkshow.com, and leave us a message. Just click on the Leave Voicemail button. Hey, this is Tony. And I'm Tammy. And this is Josh. And you've reached our 24-7 voicemail line. You guys know what to do, so at the beep, leave your message. Hey, guys, it's Goose, and I just remembered I heard something on the call-in show where I think it was Tammy asked, you know, what different kinds of snow there is, and I just remembered, and I wanted to tell you, um, there's there's a lot of different kinds, but there's two main kinds that, you know, you don't want to get them mixed up. Obviously, fresh fallen snow, it's not really packed in. It's not really hard. It's real fluffy. So, it, it's easy to bash through, so to speak, because it's real soft. And you can get through it very, very easily. Um, so the kind that's actually really dangerous is the kind that's not fresh. And it's been hit by the sun, melted, and refrozen multiple times. This stuff can be deceiving because if you hit that stuff that's deep enough, you might be able to go through two foot of fresh fallen snow, but if you hit one foot, one and a half foot of that hard, melted and refrozen snow, you just might get stuck because it's not as giving as fresh fallen snow. And it's more like ice. It's more likely to pack together and create a sheet of ice underneath your tires versus fresh fallen snow kind of stays fluffy and is much more giving for you to get through. All right. Just wanted to throw that out there. See if anybody else has any input on that. All right. Goose calling us from flight operations aboard the aircraft Seriously, carrier Nimitz. He's <laughs> in the back of an F-18 or something. He's, All right, hold on. Uh, we appreciate Goose calling in. I'm going to call the Jeep Talk Show. Yeah, just uh, turn off the, th- the steam cats for a second, guys. i got to make a call. <laughs> no, we give, uh, give Goose a hard time. Into the Jeep Talk Show live from an aircraft carrier. Who would have yeah. thunk it? <laughs> no, but he's right, though. There are so yeah. many different types of snow out there and each one takes a different kind of driving makes it interesting and fun to learn i'm sure yeah hey everybody calling to announce the arrival of a new jeep in my driveway i got a 2005 jeep liberty with the 2.8 turbo diesel Mm -hmm. Uh, so far i like it the the cherokee is is or once the in-laws figure out where the where they put the wife's title. And uh, I, th- I think the Civic is going to have to disappear and then the Cherokee can go where that lived in the garage and maybe I can actually get around to lifting it and doing everything I ever wanted to do because it's now not a daily driver. So hopefully the CRD continues to me to and from work and whatnot all right uh if anyone knows where any any crds are laying around in junkyards i i think it's very important i collect a bunch of spare parts (laughs) because this thing seems quite expensive to buy parts for so all right keep up the good work
Now, the Liberty was kind of a, a fail in my book until he said turbo diesel. And I went, oh, yeah. that doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> now, that little CRD is actually a, a halfway decent motor, but it is very rare. I actually seen a couple of them out here in the Northwest. And trust me, I mean, they they are few and far between. So if you can find something in a junkyard with a, with a CRD in it, I mean, seriously, just start pulling parts because you're going to need, I'm not, I'm not saying you're going to need them, but you're going to want to, uh, to have the, uh, the junkyard prices versus the, yeah. the uh, brand new. Better have it cheaper than uh, factory prices. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Tammy could probably answer this one. Uh, Jeep badge of honor. Uh, I think you have the trail rated badge and that qualifies you for it. I got a, 2005 Liberty, and uh, it's got the trail rated badge, <clears throat> so I think that my I, I, I should be good, right? Uh, I, I do know they exist, because when my friend Tom got married, the hotel we stayed in, there was a JK with like six or seven badges on it, so I know it's real. I know you have you haven't mentioned receiving your badges yet so uh your subject I'm just kind of curious uh your thoughts on it uh adding extra badges to my jeep seems like an interesting thing to do all right thanks bye um the jeep badge of honor is an app that you can download and you can actually go to their website to see there are different places all over the country where can you can earn badges. Not every state has um, a place where you can earn badges. But anyway, you d download the app, you type in your VIN number, your name, address, all that stuff. And when you get close to one of these trails, you check in, you do the trail, and they'll send you the little badges that you can put on your Jeep. Some people think it's lame putting it on their Jeep, so they'll you know, put it on their toolbox or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I still have not gotten my badges. Oh, no. Um, from March and June. Oh, my God. And goodness. I know we a bunch of us got emails from Jeep saying they had some sort of backlog and they are coming. So we will see. That's a shame. You know, I, I, th I think maybe I've talked to, talked to you guys about this before, but we should have a Jeep talk show badge system. Uh, one of the things I was thinking was if you, we come up with a multiple guess, uh, question like, you know, 25, 50 questions or something. And it, and once you've passed this questionnaire and we know that you've listened to the first 10 episodes oh, of geez. the show, you get a, a Jeep talk show, purple oh. heart badge. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Perfect. A purple heart badge. <laughs> And not the not the Tammy purple. I mean, this is the, you know oh, no, you're going to be severely yeah, wounded you, you because of the quality, right? <laughs> you would, uh, yeah, you would definitely have suffered injury. <laughs> uh, I know that we don't have enough time to do what we do, but that would be a lot of fun to come up with some oh, uh, Jeep man. talk show badges. And there you know, is a, there is a, a a Jeep talk show badge idea that I have on the back burner. Uh, I just I haven't had the time that I need to dedicate to it mm -hmm. to to do all the the solid model and rendering and and stuff uh, for it. Uh, I have basically confirmed that I can get machine time to do it out of solid billet aluminum. I have confirmed through a coworker that he's willing to do it out of a 3D printer. His just doesn't have great resolution. Um, and I've you know, pretty much got the go-ahead to be able to do this in quantity. Um, oh so my it's not going to be free. I can do prototypes for free. But if we were to go forward with actual billet aluminum Jeep talk show badges that people could affix to their vehicle if they wanted or computer or laptop, what have you. Um, th it's something that I'm working on. It's just, it takes a lot of time to do the level of rendering and modeling that I need to do to make this happen. So um, just be patient guys. It's something that we will eventually get to. <laughs> I think that'd be so cool to have a, a Jeep talk Jeep show talk badge. Show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's basically, I mean, basically what it's going to be is, is essentially the, the show's logo as um as a jeep badge so it'll be the same diameter as a trail rated badge it mm -hmm. will be you know out of billet aluminum um and uh if you want to you know pay extra to have that anodized or something like that i'm sure that's something that we can figure out but uh yeah that kind of stuff is uh is definitely in in the works so i don't know i'm gonna i don't think i've shown this before mainly because it's hard to see but uh, i did have this done up and let me see if i can get the flashlight on it great so, radio great pod 
Uh huh. <laughs> well, so describe describe working three our things here at the same time. What it is that you were uh, that you were holding up? Yeah, I got to get the microphone back in front of me. So basically, this is uh, it. it kind of feels like styrofoam, but it was three D printed by a uh, a three D rendering that I did on my computer. And it is very detailed, and it is basically the, oh, wow. the Jeep Talk Show logo. Oh, I can see it. Can you see it? Yeah. Uh, and that, that flashlight is, is too bright, I know. But it's basically the, the, the Jeep Talk Show logo uh, in a, a circle with a backing. You know, when I first did the rendering, I didn't put the backing on it. Oh. <laughs> And I'm so glad I need you need a floor there. Don't <laughs> and I kind of I'm so glad I didn't order it because I would got an envelope full of little bits, little parts, and a yeah. circle. Here you go. <laughs> Here, Yikes! Put it together. Some assembly required. <laughs> <laughs> and they're small, so I did that the size uh, of the Jeep uh, badges that they, that they stick on. What do you call them? Is it just Jeep badges? Like yeah. the trail rated badges? Yeah, trail yeah. rated badges or something. Uh, like th- this was very quick and dirty that I did that because I just wanted to see how it would turn out. Badge I, I did, of honor. Yeah. And uh, so I didn't do the little notches on the side and the curve and all the rest of that crap. But it is exactly as I drew. It is so cool. I mean, 3D, 3D printing, 3D rendering is going to be the future. Oh, um, it, it already is. I, yeah, I get uh, newsletters about about how they're using it in uh, in you know manufacturing and stuff now. It's just incredible. Yeah, it is. So, the, but the the material that it's made out of uh, is not uh, weatherproof, so it cannot go on the outside. Ah, uh, but that one was seventeen dollars to have geez. that to have I that mean, printed. Wow. Uh, Still sneeze on it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's very it's actually very very nice, and it's a dense material. It's just not it can't go on the jeep. Uh, and, uh, but anyway, they, they do it in other things. Uh, I'm sure it's not printed. It's probably C and C, but they can do it in aluminum and everything else for $300. Yeah, <laughs> so, no, don't, don't, the cost yes. isn't going to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a really, we actually had somebody on the show that we interviewed because they were, uh, making badges, uh, for Jeeps and they were really cool That's badges. Right. And I think they were charging, uh, like a hundred bucks, uh, for those things. And, and understandably so, because they're, they're incredibly, uh, difficult to make, uh, cheaply anyway. Yeah, at seventeen dollars. It was more than worth it to me to 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 have one printed. Sure. And uh, I just uh, I I was going to actually print enough of those things uh, so you guys could have one. I, I just I didn't like the black, and I need to figure out a better color to use because this actually needs to be purple. Be painted. Uh, you know, just strangely, not red. Strangely enough, uh, when I asked them about purple, they said not only no but hell no. Yeah. Oh, they did not. <laughs> full Full Metal Badges. Full Metal they Badges not. was that. That's uh, right. That That's right. Yep. I hadn't heard from them in a while. Uh, if they're listening, they need to check in with us and tell us how it's going. Yeah, they're still on Facebook. At least their page is still active. Do we have one more voicemail or was that it? Uh, I played two, right? That was you it. Played yep. Two from Joliet John. Okay. Yep. Very good. Well, hey, Jeep Junkies, you guys remember our midweek fix, don't you? Well, we've got something even better. Now there's even more Jeep Talk Show to love. It's called the Jeep Talk Colin Show. And Tammy and Tony take your calls live every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Central Time. Don't worry about trying to figure out how to listen to the show and talk on the phone at the same time. <laughs> Heck, we can't even walk and chew gum at the same time. So the Colin Show plays the live show right over your phone. All you have to do is call. Join us every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Central Time at JeepTalkShow.com. The call numbers are right there. Trust us, if it was as easy as 1-900-JEEP, we would have done it already. <laughs> Don't forget to download this extra free content, extra week, guys. Or better yet, subscribe to be sure that you never miss anything from the Jeep Talk Show. Yeah, we love hearing from you guys. And frankly, if uh, you just want to call in at 8 p.m. Uh, Central Time, the, the show time, you can listen to the show on your phone. That way you don't even have to worry about listening <laughs> and then calling in. You just call in early and we'll get to you and you can just stay connected throughout the entire show. Because uh, we're not going to disconnect you. We'll mute you, but we're not going to disconnect you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, folks, now it's time for my Jeep Mama product review. Yay! Um, last week, we um, did must-have Jeep stuff, um, must-have stuff for your Jeep segment. And I did this car. I, so, what I did is I searched for some cool things that I thought might work, and I found this car pocket organizer i don't know if you can see it oh did you see that message on facebook the guy was asking for the link yeah on that. i i i um i gave him a link good and he actually emailed me that was two people asking me about this that was a great oh, wow. idea yeah and this is a seat a car pocket organizer otherwise known as the seep gap console filler and I saw this and I thought, you know what, I'm going to buy this for myself. And I did, and I've used it for a week now, so I'm going to give it a review. 
First, you're probably wondering, what the heck is it? Well, you place it between the edge of your seat in your Jeep and the center console, and it, it prevents items you may drop to fall down in between your seat and console or under your seat. What you do is you use it for storage, like your cell phone, glasses, chapstick, money, pen, paper, whatever. Well, I give this thing five stars. The so, quality so. is unbelievable. It's made of premium quality leather. It's very sturdy and very well made. So let's see that um, thing again, Tammy. I've got it, I got you full screen. Let's see. Hold it up to the camera again. And you can see the little pocket there that you can. Uh, it goes between the really seat nice. and the, the center console. Yep. And I have my little brush in here right now. Fold out brush. Um, I have two of them. This is my passenger seat side, and I have one on the driver's seat. Do they come in pairs? Um, pardon? Do you have to buy one, buy it individually, or do, you, do they come um, in pairs? The one I got, there are many different kinds out there, but I like this one specifically um, because it's made of leather, and it seems really sturdy compared to some of the others I've seen. And you can go to my Jeep Mama website on Tuesday, and I'll have it on my gift list, a link. Um, but you get two for $22 and I actually think they're on sale right now during the holidays. Um, but anyway, they're super easy to install. They're very sturdy, but they're also flexible and they fit in between the seat and the console. They're about a half inch to two inches. What's it, um, what's it called again? In the Amazon thing, they called it the car pocket organizer slash seat gap console filler. Wow. You know, I, yeah. I, I was doing that. I was looking up in Amazon and that's exactly what it came up as. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I do a Google search for gap filler and I get a whole bunch of different oh. stuff. <laughs> uh, um, you, you're not supposed to put putty in there, fella. <laughs> you know what? It even stays in place when I move my seat back and forth. They're super easy to clean. Now, they work great with my Jeep Wrangler. I'm not sure how they're going to be compatible with other vehicles. I would guess the same. Oh, I think it would be fine for a Cherokee, too. Yeah. Um, I'm Is just, there any I'm not, interference with the seat belt? You my, know, where, you, where, you, well, where the seat belt goes down? I mean, is there any interference with that? It kind of sticks up. I don't think they would be. Yeah, my seat belt. I mean, I had to. Sometimes my seat belt, if it's not plugged in or snapped in, yeah. you know, the little, little thing button. will go down. You can just push it up. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. Um, but I haven't, I love it. I have to get a set of these. I, I don't, yeah, I'm curious I don't to lose see how many very packages very often, of fries I can scram into one of those. Things. I was thinking hot <laughs> right. pockets when she said this, uh, you know, the, the pocket, I was thinking you could put several fit. hot pockets in there, line it with some foil, keep fry. it, keep it nice and uh, nice and warm. And I hear they're coming out with a uh, Glock holster model so oh, that you geez. can, Pop it Tammy, in. Uh, Tammy, if you were to drop something like a pen in there, would 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 you be able to get it out? I mean, is it? Could you get to something down to the bottom of that, or is oh, it yeah. like impossible if, if something small chapstick. drops in it? Yeah, my chapstick sometimes falls flat. I don't have it in here, and I can get get in and reach it. Now my hands aren't as big as. Yeah, stick your hand I, in there. You could. You and, could. You could. Um, all you guys on the radio, uh, look at this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well, you can one, you can get to the bottom of that pretty easy then. Oh yeah. One other question. You said it's made out of leather. Then um, would you let, let's say you're getting in and out of your Jeep during a, a muddy or a snowy recovery and you, and you, you know, you get some you get some moisture on that. Is it going to fall apart? I mean, is it is it like leather wrapped cardboard or is it does it really seem kind of beefy? Oh, I it's really it's really beefy. I don't I mean, it it's we got stitching here okay. along the top and it's got like a piece on the top that's stitched what are those rivets for is it just something to stiffen it or it's, it's holding the this top piece oh okay to it feels like really really strong cardboard so if you forgot your purse you could actually uh, carry that as a uh, yeah, little yeah, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> i Throw love a ratchet it strap around that you can hang it from your shoulder yeah. it'd be perfect <laughs> <laughs> a tree saver yeah a and the inside cord, you know, is made you of got. leather. Too. A couple of D rings and a tree saver. Uh, you, can, you can clean the inside with a, a, a wet cloth. You know, with an unlimited budget and a staff, there's no telling what we would come up with. I might just buy you guys these for Christmas. I was thinking about getting uh, getting one for for uh, Susie for the TJ because I she loves crap like that. 
Right. Organizing stuff. Women I'd, like organizing stuff. I don't like oh, dropping. Oh, sure. Give them one more reason to break into my Honda. <laughs> I, see I really don't drop stuff in between there very often, but but it has happened, and it's very frustrating because you got to go fishing underneath there, and you know how many how many stale fries can you can you actually right. eat? <laughs> well, it would, it, Josh. It would be a great place to put your fries. Yeah, I it, yeah. I could probably see keep that. them a little a little bit warmer too. Yeah, better than that paper bag, anyways. All right, we're having too much fun here. Yeah, yeah. I know. We gotta. <laughs> it's at an hour now. <laughs> hey, folks. Um, we need you to tell a friend about the show. I bet by now everyone knows someone with a Jeep. They could benefit from our show and not even know it exists. The only way they can know it exists if you help get the word out by telling your friends, your neighbors, or maybe that guy at the office with the cool black Wrangler. Let them know about the Jeep Talk Show. Who knows where it might lead? Downloads. More <laughs> downloads, people. Lots where of downloads. Think it was going to lead. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, we put we spent a lot of time working on this show. I know you can't tell, and uh, we we absolutely positively love everybody that is taking the time to listen to our show. But let uh, let your friends know about this, and you know if you're a member of a club, send out an email, uh, stand up in a, in a loud uh, voice, a loud steady voice. Let everybody know at your next Jeep meeting about the Jeep Talk Show. I mean, God Lord, how hard is it to share remember? us on Facebook? Yeah, share us let, on Google Plus. Let people know it. it it's it's like uh, it makes us feel good, and it's Christmas time. It's time for oh, who for, doesn't like those warm fuzzies? <laughs> oh, is there a warm fuzzy that you can review for the Jeep, Tammy? <laughs> it's, it's sitting on my chin right now. <laughs> oh, now you're bragging. You're bragging to the women out there. All right. Well, uh, do we have time for a little uh, campfire side chat? If we do it fast, uh, really super fast. I just I really want to get this little stinger out here. Well, go ahead. Second. We don't have to do all the intro all right. stuff. You yeah, guys, I recently heard that the Cherokee KL has a budget boost available. This is the new the new Cherokee, and for a long time it was it was just like oh who wants that? You can't even lift it. There's no aftermarket support. Well, now there is some like DIY budget boost options out there. Um, we're talking less than forty dollars. We're talking a couple hours worth of work. And some very, very easy type of modifications. We're talking like drilling a single hole in a couple of places. I mean, it's that easy. So um, I'm looking into it to see if this is a viable modification that can be done to new Cherokees or not. Uh, it certainly looks very, very promising right now. And uh, it's right now people are netting anywhere from one to up to two and a half inches by doing this. So um, hmm. I'm going to see if this is safe for one. I'm going to see if it's uh, worth doing for two and if it's a, a long lasting mod that you can trust uh, because I don't want to put anybody at risk or anything like that. So I'm going to look into this a little bit more. And for all you new Cherokee owners out there, you might be able to do some budget boost stuff with uh, some very basic hand tools and uh, a little bit of your time. Yeah, I kind of thought that might uh, might happen as uh, people got those things and started looking at them and uh, thinking about it and drinking a few beers. They come up with something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, I just want to quick say hi to Super Croc. Hi, Croc. Um, I know a couple weeks ago, I think Nikki G mentioned that he was wondering where he was. And, you know, I kept thinking, God, I have, we haven't seen him in the chat room. And so I reached out, um, in my hangouts and asked if he was still around and he was, and he was here in the chat room tonight and would say, welcome back. We missed you. You know, a lot of times uh, people are released from jail because of good behavior. <laughs> <laughs> this uh this wasn't the case <laughs> they uh they uh they got tired of his uh his witty oh, repartee poor Anton. and there's oh, just so poor many Anton. times that you can walk into the room saying <laughs> lamifications so wow we're anyway, loving we're it. glad you're back i am <laughs> Lo- do anything loving, i laughed loving I, the z- I know loving the zoom in there josh Dude, that's great I, I, I swear i didn't do anything I, th- I think you got a little spinach there in your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, always a good sport. All right. Oh, quick question, Tammy. Your headlight, you had one headlight uh, kind of blink out on you and your, your husband manhandled it. Has it been yeah. fine since? Um, it did one. Well, I came home and I'm like, I was driving home and it was, I'm like, something's not right <laughs> with my lights. It was at night. So I get out when I get in my driveway and I'm like, one of the headlights was not as bright as the other. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's weird. So I call my husband, hey, come look at this. And he looks at it and he went, <laughs> <It's> bang. <laughs> Does the old Fonzie yeah. slap to yeah, it. I'm there like, you go. <laughs> so that happened to me when I was getting ready to come home from work. And so I thought, okay. And I hit it. And I think I have 
my wires are loose in there. So you hit it and then you immediately apologize to it, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But it's no, not what I was, made me do. It's not going completely out. It's just it's no, no, like no, dim it's just, or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's like half the power, the hmm. brightness or whatever. Yeah, I don't people, know. It's kind of weird. People are thinking you're winking at them as you're driving down the, uh, I know. Down the road. Uh, do yourself a favor. Take them out and switch their positions. Put the passenger side and the driver's side. Put the driver's side and the passenger side. See if, it, if, the, if the problem follows the light, then you know it's the light itself. If the problem uh-huh. stays in the location, then you know it's the wiring. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and you may fix it just simply by disconnecting the wiring and putting it yeah. back together. <laughs> exactly. Right. So either way. You yeah, know, I wasn't you'll, sure what cause it would go half. Yeah, either either way you're getting uh you'll either fix it permanently or you'll uh, know what the problem is. So it's it's right. a that's a good idea. Well, let's get over to some wheeling where. Yeah, hey guys, uh, kind of last minute here, but uh, it's Lynn Benton Jeep Club and they're presenting Jeeps for Joy it's happening December 10th. That's actually this weekend as we are recording this. Uh it's happening at the Mark Thomas Motors down in Albany, Oregon from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, they need your guys' help uh filling up as many Jeeps to the brim as possible with new or unwrapped toys for underprivileged, underprivileged kids to in the area. Check them out on Facebook or go uh, check them out on Facebook to see how you guys can get involved. Or if you want to get involved directly, please call 541-788-7634 and, uh, and see how you can uh, help these people out. They're doing some good stuff, guys. I'm going to make it down there this that this weekend. Uh, I'm going to bring some toys for the kitties as well. I'm going to say hi to the good, for the Jeep fans and, uh, and of course, uh, do my part to, well, give some kids a Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah. That's the one that reached out to us on uh, Facebook in the uh, in the chat. That's great, Josh. Indeed. I appreciate it. It's like an 80-mile drive for you, so appreciate you going down. Yeah. So uh, are you are you ready with uh, the teasing about the, uh, the Honda? <laughs> I'm going to park <laughs> a block away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry. We were waiting for Josh the, from the Jeep Talk Show. <laughs> Not the Honda show. All right. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I'm fully expecting that. Yeah, it's great. We uh, hope to see some pictures and maybe some audio from uh, from that event. Uh, maybe some video. We could show some video on the show, too. Yeah, that'd be great. Especially before Christmas. Uh, so uh, that's great. And I don't know if you guys are aware, uh, xgtalk.com. Uh, I think John, uh, pre-runner 1982, actually did something like this recently. And uh, I, uh, I was reading about it. I don't know if he posted it or if it was just in chat, but they had like... 42 uh, tractor trailer loads of toys or something. There was Holy a, a there was awesome. a there, there was a bunch of toys. I'm wow. I'm I'm exaggerating, but they collected oh. so <laughs> many vehicles worth of of toys for, oh, for the I kids. Love yeah, it's great. All right, so the, uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, we want you to know the Jeep Talk Show is also available in audio only format. Great to listen to while commuting or working on your Jeep. Subscribe via iTunes, tuned in Google Play or iHeartRadio, and never miss an episode. Speaking of subscribing, you can now subscribe with your money. I know. Woohoo! Yes, you can contribute directly to the show via PayPal. Just go to the JeepTalkShow.com and look for the orange button that says subscribe. You can select from 25 cents a week up to $1. Your account will be charged weekly. Cancel at any time. Even if you don't subscribe, we appreciate you taking the time to listen to our show. And did you know it can take up to four days for your favorite podcast episode to show up on Apple iTunes? It's true iTunes is a great free service, and we appreciate Apple for all of their hard work, but we want our listeners to get the Jeep Talk Show as quickly as possible. That's why we are recommending that all of you iTunes users subscribe to our podcast. No multi-day delay. You'll get the newest episode much quicker. Open up iTunes, search for the Jeep Talk Show, and hit that subscribe button. and You'll never miss a great, funny, informative podcast. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, guys. It's how we bring the live show to you every each and every week. YouTube.com slash Jeep Talk Show. It's a great way to get those notifications live that we are doing a live show. Well, that's it for this week, guys. Wherever you are wheeling, if you pack it in, make sure you pack it out. Let's leave our outdoor recreation spots in as good, if not better condition than they were when we arrived. Remember to always tread lightly. Stand on the trails. No wheel where you're not supposed to. If you'd like to learn more about the Tread Lightly principles and how you can help keep our trails and public lands open for off road use, head over to www.treadlightly.org. <laughs> And don't forget, you can check out my blog at www.jeepmama.com, and you can follow me on my Jeep journey. And things are picking up over in the voiceover world, guys. Check my voiceover work out over at thevoiceofjosh.com. Get him while he's cheap. (laughs) Yeah, really. Oh, I know. Josh says, I'll be cheap in the future. Don't worry about it. (laughs) You guys have a great Jeep week.